Hi everyone and welcome to our chat and vibe series for the upcoming Vitality Festival which starts on the 31st of October. We would love for you to join our event. It's a free online health and wellbeing festival for frontline workers and anybody that needs it at the moment as a result of dealing with life, all the ups and downs and the presses, pressures and stresses of what's been going on in COVID. So today we've got Lee Eisenman. Thank you for coming to join us. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> Lee is from Core Physio and she's one of our amazing presenters who is going to be taking one of their activity-based sessions that we've got each morning. How are you, Lee? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good today. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a little bit of up and down, isn't it, in terms yes. of what's been going on. Yes. So tell us, Lee, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today. Oh, sure. So I am a physiotherapist, a Pilates instructor. I own Core Physio and Pilates in Elstonwick. I'm a mum of three beautiful children and I've been doing this, yeah, obviously since school I've been a physio and I love helping people. I love community. So I've built this beautiful business to help as many people as we can feel good, stay well. Physio and Pilates is, you know, we want to empower people through movement to live a happy, healthy life. So that's my, my goal in life and trying to do that even at the moment. Wow. And it must be really a bit tricky with all the COVID and people not being able to come to classes and, yeah. and for sessions. Have you been able to move things online? Yeah, we, we moved really quickly from being, you know, completely, you know, seeing 500 you know, people a week to, to going completely online for about 12 weeks. Um, and now we're doing a combination of both. So, yeah, we've got online classes. We do telehealth, which is physio via Zoom, which people, you know, it sounds like, how can I do physio online? But it really, there's some amazing um, results. People are getting better. But now we can do more face-to-face, -face, just physio. Pilates, yeah, we're doing Zoom classes. We're doing some falls and balance classes. And they've been really popular because, you know, the more vulnerable elderly clients who can't come in are learning how to do stuff at home. We've got amazing pre- and postnatal classes all via Zoom, those women are loving it because they're at home and they don't have to worry about leaving the house. So there have been some really good um, things that have come out of it. Um, but it's, it is hard not being able to see our clients and, and really give them that tactile feedback, but we're yeah. doing our best. I know it's a challenge at the moment with everybody, you know, being, especially in Victoria, for those people who are watching from Victoria and we've sort of all been shut down into our houses and everything. What have you found some of the main um, trials and tribulations of, the, of your clientele that are coming in? What have you sort of seen mostly from, from people? Yeah, well, what's been really hard is that we've only been able to see face-to-face -face really urgent physio. So we had to say no to a lot of people for about nine, 10 weeks and just try coach them through telehealth to feel better. So that was quite tough. People are sore. People are really sore from being at home in their, in their offices, trying to manage work and parenting and homeschooling. So our clients are quite sore and, um, you know, they say they're broken, but I don't like that's quite a negative word. But, you know, people are really feeling they're missing the movement. They're missing their, that hands-on correction. People are also missing, you know, missing that interaction with, with other humans in, an, in, a, in a mindful way, not just at the supermarket. So mm. clients are missing that. They're, the ones that are coming now that we're allowed to see are obviously super happy that they're back, back face to face. Yeah. I know it's a really big thing not being able to have that skin contact, whether it be for the, you know, the manipulation that you're um, doing or the adjustments in the classes. But I think, you know, I, I see it a lot. You know, I teach the yoga and people are missing that community of coming together, which yeah. I think is, it's been really important. I think it's a really big, important part of our lives. Absolutely. And I think I've built this business. It's, you know, we're a studio. We're not just, you know, no one's a number. We are really a, a community. Being in Elstonwick, we have a lot of, you know, local clients. And I, people, so we still have that sense of community, even though a lot of people are over the Zoom or over the classes, they still feel that. We're still keeping in touch. We're calling. All my, all my physios are calling their clients. Um, but yeah, they are missing even coming and hanging out with their friends that they normally used to do their, their Pilates and their physio with. But yeah, we, I think... We can see the end is hopefully, well, not the end, but we can see that the light at the end of the tunnel is hopefully getting closer. A closer, I know. Hopefully in a few weeks we'll be able to turn, return to five people or even 10 people yeah. in the room. It'll make a really big yeah. difference. We've got a huge, we've got huge space. We've got four Pilates studios um, and four physio rooms. So we have a lot of space. So hopefully they are, they, 
look at things fairly and they give us, you know, because we have a lot of space in here. So um, we were able to come back the last time and things were really great, you know, in July, you know, it was great to see all our clients. They all came back really happy. Yeah. And tell us, Lee, for yourself, what have you found some of the most challenging things um, that have happened to you through this time? Yeah. So I think a big thing has been that I've had to try and manage and keep my team of about 15 staff mm. motivated, positive, happy, given the situation whilst homeschooling and trying to run a household. So, and, you know, not, you know, and even being in the studio when there was just no one coming in or out, like it just felt really lonely. And, and also teaching a class on Zoom, as you probably know, it's, it's not the most fulfilling experience, you know, teaching mute people, seeing their little screens, or even if they've turned their cameras off, it's, it's just, it's not as, I do really love it though, because I know that people at the end are like, oh, I feel so good now. So I get that satisfaction. I think, yeah, keeping the staff happy and motivated has probably been the hardest thing. Feeling a bit isolated in that, yeah, just quite isolated, even though I do have somewhere to come at least now. Um, and homeschooling's tough. I've got a four-year-old, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. So wow. all been home until next week. So that has not been easy. I think I felt like I was juggling a lot of balls and there were balls being dropped. But I also listened to my body and just did what I can, my body and just did what I can and didn't put extra pressure. I thought this time mm. around, you know, these are the classes we offer. If they're not busy, so well, you know. Mm. I think that's really important what you said about not to put extra pressure because I think a lot of people at the moment, frontliners in particular, um, parents who are at home, homeschooling, you know, there's, there are a lot of extra pressures that we're all having to deal with, um, with this confinement. And I think, you know, that feeling of overwhelm comes because there's, in some ways, there's nothing to do, but in some ways, there's yes. so much to do. And we're juggling so many balls that we're so not used to. So I think, you know, just to take, to manage one thing at a time and not to put too much pressure on yourself is really important. I think so too. And also listening to your body and what you need at the time, like, I like to run, but I feel at the moment running's not giving me what I need. I'm feeling like I need them. So the other day I just got my spiky balls out and I put some music on and and I carved out some time, which I hadn't, and I felt like that's what I needed. So I'm, I'm obviously, as we all were getting better at listening to our bodies and um, and just taking small steps, you know, you don't have to do everything. And so what some days homeschooling meant, we, we baked instead of doing the, the math. So, and that was yeah. fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I love, look, that's one of the things that we've um, factored into this Vitality Festival because everybody at the end gets access to all the sessions on video. So it allows people to take their own time and to come back and to do the classes and to listen to all the speakers, Fantastic. you know, as is necessary. So you're, you're going to be doing a session of Pilates during yes. the festival. Tell us a little bit about what people can expect from oh, your session. Oh. You will come to that session in the morning, probably having just woken up, and you will leave the session feeling probably taller. You'll feel lengthened. <laughs> you'll, feel, you'll feel really, you know, everything's going to be woken up. So the little muscles in your core, in your upper back, in your hips, it's not going to be too hard because I'm, you know, obviously want to t tailor it to everyone. So I'll give options. Your back will feel good. You'll feel really calm. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, you'll feel really calm because Pilates is a combination of mind and body. So there's a lot of breath work. You'll definitely feel your abdominals. And as I said, your posture, you'll just hopefully have a spring in your step and have a wonderful day. Amazing. And does it make a difference if people have never done Pilates? Will they be able to Not come a, as well? Absolutely, they can come. I'll make sure that even the person is never, no, it doesn't even know what Pilates is, will have a fantastic session. And those, you know, people who've done Pilates for years will still. So I give lots of options. Being a physio, you will know, the cues that I give will be able to take you either up or, you know, you can choose, take what you want, leave what you don't. Even if you have a little, little injury, some minor back pain, it'll probably help. Yeah, amazing. I think a lot of people have got back and neck pain as well. Yeah. I know the kids, especially, you know, sitting uh -huh. at home doing all of this business, all it'll day. be helpful for them too. Yes, if you can get your kids to come on, join, let them join. <laughs> I love that. And tell me, what um, move, looking forward, what exciting things have you got to look forward to in your life? Well, of course, um, obviously, kids going back to school is one thing, but then in terms Yay. of... The yeah, yeah. <laughs> next week. In terms of the business, I'm just looking forward to be able to offer our whole range of services. So, you know, for us, physio is one part, and Pilates, you know, we call it we call it functional physio and, and physio eight classes, whether because we're all physios. Those bigger reformer classes, getting back on the equipment, 
helping as many people as we were helping before. I think just getting people back in the studio and feeling good. You know, a lot of clients may have balance issues that are, you know, they, they weakening, their bodies are weakening at home. So just getting people moving again, seeing their beautiful faces reconnecting and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying my slower pace in my in terms of my social life. So I'm actually happy with the slower pace <laughs> but in terms of family life. Yeah. Just getting the kids back in happy and, and business flourishing again. Love it. That sounds fantastic. And what words of encouragement have you got for our viewers and listeners today? Yeah. I think number one, congratulate yourself for taking part of this festival. And, and as we said, take what you want, leave what you don't be kind to yourself, just baby steps. You don't have to, you know, they say walk before you run. You don't have to do something every day. As long as, you know, I think listen to your body and do what you need to fill your cup. So whether that is the running or the walking or the yoga or the glass of wine, whatever it is, as long as you're <laughs> moderation and you're doing what is going to give you you need right now. And, you know, congratulate yourself on the work, the hard work you do and mm. stop. It's nice to stop, actually. I think this, fe this festival is amazing and that it's giving us an opportunity to thank, you know, to thank you guys, but also for you to thank, you, you know, to stop and reflect on the good work that you do. So being mindful. Mm. Love it. Thank you so much, Lee, for having a yeah. chat with us today. To we cup. hope everybody um, will join us for the Vitality Festival. Bel um, below this, you'll find a link where you can find us at vitavibeevents.com. We'd love you to register and tell everybody you need. We just want to help as many people as possible. We want to show you our support. We want to offer some encouragement and education and inspiration and motivation. We're all coming out of this COVID cocoon together and we're looking forward to paving a new, amazing, better future for ourselves. So we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks, Lee. Thank you.